So the next option is bracketing in continuous mode. Now to use this option, if we go to take an image, what we have to do is use our self timer which is here and we've got to set it to custom timer. So as long as we've got our timer set to custom then we know we'll be able to use the bracketing. So when we set up our custom timer we need to make sure we've got three shots going on. So if we just click down for our custom timer, press menu for our settings. And all we do is we press down and just make sure that we select the amount of shots we want to do. You could do more if you wanted to, but generally in bracketing you just sort of do three. If you're not sure what bracketing is, I won't go into too much detail, but it basically takes uh, overexposure and underexposure and an average exposure or the exposure that you've picked. And that lets you do HDR images, but it also lets you take pictures maybe during events and things where you're likely to get a bit of a dodgy exposure you've got three different exposures so if you do happen to take a picture that's too dark lightning this is one of your other exposures might come out better so you don't have to worry about missing an image because it's too dark or light where you are the first one we're going to go through is TV bracketing so that's time value bracketing now these are fractions of an exposure value so if we pick this one, what it's going to do is it's going to do a third of an exposure value. So it's not going to do a full step up and down, it's going to do a fraction of it. So if I just do an example, if I set it to 1, you'll see we've got a fraction of a stop, then we're up to 1 stop, then we're up to 1 stop and a third. So we can go quite specific, we can go 2 stops, so that's you've got your middle number here and you're going one stop either side so one stop over one stop under and again you'll be going two stops over two stops under and then these fractions are sort of going between those two stops so again if you're not sure about stops check out step 26 because that'll explain that so the highest we can do is four stops either side of your original exposure now that's pretty extreme um, that would mainly be for HDR, I'd assume. I don't think you would do that during an event. But I'll show you the difference. So what we'll do is we'll do it by one stop either side. So we're going one number higher and one no number lower than our main exposure. So I'll just show you that. So you'll see that my self timer has disappeared. It just does that when I went into the menu. So I'm going to go back to custom timer. And you'll see up the top, bracketing has shown up. And it's just telling us it's one exposure value so if we just take a picture of this ooh, of this Nivea bottle what you'll hear it do I've got it set to one second timer at the moment I'm going to actually change that slightly so looking at my exposure value on the side this should be an average exposure so I'm just going to take a picture here the self timer will go off you can see it flashing in the uh, background um, so it will start to go if you just have to rely on self timer so it will do one, two, three. you heard that so what it will do is it will do your original one it will do one slower and one faster remember when you're doing it by time it's not the same as doing it by aperture when you do it by aperture you, you tend to change the amount of light without changing the shutter speed whereas when you're doing it with time value you'll actually find that you get one shot that's quicker and one shot that's slower. This could be handy if you're in a room where you're likely to get a lot of people moving around. It's good to do bracketing with time because maybe one shot will be too slow but with enough light whereas the other one may be a bit darker but you've got a picture without people blurring so that's sort of the idea. So we just play that back. This image is underexposed this image is overexposed and that's our average image so you see it's taken three shots we've only pressed it once and those are the results so we could compile them together in HDR to get a reasonably uninteresting image of a Nivea bottle or um, maybe we were walking around and actually it turned out that the Nivea bottle looked better overexposed than it did on the average exposure
when we're using bracketing with aperture, because the SX40 doesn't really have a wide range of aperture we can use, you're not really going to get a great result if you go for anything that's too high or too low compared to your original aperture probably if you do sort of one above and one below you're going to get a fairly good range you'll notice that the um, the time doesn't change for the amount of time the picture's been taken with time value obviously it's changing how fast the image is being taken this one's changing how much light the aperture is letting so if we just take three images And if we look at them back, we've got underexposed, overexposed, and average. So that's the aperture value override. So here we've got the subject distance again. Again, it's in millimetres, which is kind of annoying. But I've just set up an example here. So say as an example, you wanted to take a picture of the ends of these pencils and pens. But you find that every time you focus on the middle one the other two go out of focus this is quite common when you take a picture your plane of focus is flat so you see this is the front of your camera this is the focus so if you pick a distance say here it's only really gonna focus here it generally unless you're doing macro it usually does two thirds behind and a third in front in focus so you get sort of a section in focus when you do macro it becomes a lot more shallow but anyway your focus tends to go in a line a flat line away from your camera so obviously sometimes you don't have enough depth of field to get all of your subjects in focus say I'm focusing on this middle pen here this one at the back may not be in focus because it's not in line with the other ones. So when we bracket with focus, it allows us to take a middle picture, a focus behind and a focus in front. Then we can compose all those images together um, in Photoshop or something like that. And um, we can put everything in focus. Or we can just play around with it because maybe we wanted to take that picture but we weren't sure which element we wanted in focus and which one we didn't. So we take three bracketed images so rather than having to manually change our focus every time the camera's doing it for us so it takes those three images anyway. So here we're going to look at the subject distance value. The camera's sitting in front of these spread out pens. So I've selected my subject distance to be 20 millimetres, but I've times that by 10, so it'll be 200 millimetres um, each time. So it'll go forward 200 millimetres and it'll go back 200 millimetres. So now we selected that. What we want to do, we've got to make sure that manual focus is selected. It is on mine. You won't see this override at the top if you haven't got your self timer on and if you haven't got your manual focus selected. So if you find that that red text isn't coming up, you've probably forgotten to reactivate either your custom timer or your manual focus. So you have to make sure you get your spacing right. You could actually measure the spacing between your pencils. You know, something like that. If it's a shot that you're setting up, it'll make it a lot easier. I'm sort of guessing at mine. So you'll take a couple of attempts to get this right. And try and keep your camera as flat on to your items as possible. So I'm going to spread them out a fair amount. I'm going to focus on that middle pen. This blue one might be a little bit too close for this to work. Try and move it back. So that middle pen's in focus now. Self timer's going. If we play those back, I think the blue pen was just a bit too close. But the general idea is you have three lots of focus. Uh, one in the foreground, one in the background and one in the middle. So that is what that bracketing is for. I'll try and put some better examples up if I can get them in time.
So what we're doing here is we're deciding how much above and below our normal ISO we want to go. So here we're choosing, say we've got a value of 6 and a value factor of 10, that makes 60. So when we go to take our image, put our continuous mode on. If we go back in you'll see our ISO is bracketing at 60, so it will go I have to change my ISO because it can't go below 100, so I'll go to an ISO of 400, so it will go to above at 460 and below at 340. So if we do it on a more extreme scale, so you can see the difference, we times it by 100, we can't realistically go 600 over and 600 under, so we'll go 400 over and 400 under, so we're going to go, if we just pick an ISO of 800, that's going to go to 1200 for over and 400 for under. So if we just have a look, self timer. It's done the three images at three different ISOs. So we're looking at overexposed, underexposed, and normal. So you see that the, the ISO override is actually a really quick one when it comes to light, it's quite a good one. Here you've got bracketing type. Now it's set to do plus and minus, but you can tell it to do just minus or just plus. It's up to you. If you know you're shooting in a dark place, so you want to do sort of two or three shots over the exposure you're using just in case, then you can just set it to plus or the other way around. If you think you're going to be going in and outdoors a lot and you're okay with indoors, but outdoors you think you might be overexposed, you can just set it to minus and then it will do three shots. And if you go outside and you forget to change your exposure, it's already taking it off for you. But we'll leave it on plus and minus because that's the standard. If you've got clear bracket values on start, I've got this selected. It's basically when you start your CHDK, if you don't want to be bracketing from the start, you just click this to stay on and then every time you restart your CHDK, all of these will reset so you haven't got any of your bracketing set up. The raw suffix, um, you can switch it on or off just with the dot. A uh, dot is on off is without and that is basically putting a raw name end at the end of any raw images that you've taken when you've been bracketing it just makes it easier to identify which of your bracketed images are raw and which aren't